Have you ever taken a photograph and then realised that the depth of field wasn't quite right and you didn't get the bokeh effect that you actually wanted? Well, Lightroom's got a fantastic little feature to solve just that problem. Greetings all. Uh, a very quick Lightroom tutorial on this one. Uh, this is going on about a feature that's now been added to Lightroom, which will help you to give a better or add a bokeh effect to your images. So you could just imagine you've been out in the field, you set your aperture totally wrong, which was a higher F number, and you didn't get the bokeh effect around your subject. Well, in Lightroom, we can now add that bokeh effect and it's really simple and that's what I'm doing right now. In uh, Lightroom, on the right hand side uh, on the panel here, if we scroll down we've got this lovely little feature here called Lens Blur and this is where all the fun is going to happen. So this is just the, uh, the, the plain image and you'll see how quick it actually does it. Um, it's analysing, so basically Lightroom is going to create a mask uh, which it's done, it's already added a bit of the blur to the background. We've got a lot of control over this. So you've got the blur amount on the top here, as you see it's already slightly blurred it, so let's crank it right the way up and it's blurred it a lot more. The type of bokeh effect, uh, we've got five different types here and this is going to de depend, or it does depend quite a lot on lenses, so lenses will you'll give you a different um, effect which you can actually choose from on here. So the first one is modern circular lens, the second one is a standard circular shape, um, the third one is a five blade commonly seen on vintage lenses and the fourth one is commonly seen in reflex or mirrorless also known as donut and the cat eye typically caused by optical vignetting in certain lenses. They are the three different types. So this one here, it's just a general blur. And if we go on to the next one over, you'll see the difference I changed. And again, you see the difference change and so on. So you can select your different type of blur that you want it. I am gonna pre-warn anybody who's actually using this feature in Lightroom. It is very graphic card intensive. Um, so if you don't have a really powerful card, then it does take a long time for the effects to actually happen. Uh, I mean, I've got a, a, an RTX 3070 Ti in my machine and there are times when it does lag a little bit when it's actually doing the work. So just, just keep that in mind. So going down again, we've got a bit of a boost here. Um, this part here, which is the focal range, is a really handy piece of this particular section. And the reason being, is because at the moment it's on this left hand side. If we move this to the right hand side you'll see how it's the background that's sharp and obviously the focus, so it's basically it's switched it round. So you can actually select where you want the focal range to be which is in, in certain situations that's going to be quite handy. The visual depth, basically this is the mask that it's used, but it goes one step further than just being a mask. So you'll see on this focal range here, the whites and the yellows. Well, these are the whites and the yellows. So this is the part where it's at, where it's gonna keep focused. And the purples, which is the background, is going to be where it's going to actually do the, the, the bokeh effect or the blur. <clears throat> You can add or remove where you want the, uh, or parts. So you can add to this mask what else that you want to blur or be sharpened by using the focus or the blur section here. Give a quick example. Let's um, hit the focus part there. And this H in the top corner, I'm gonna keep going over it and over it and over it because I want it to be more and more and more and more in focus. I'm just going to keep going around. You can see it's changing colour, so it's going to be, you know, similar to this. So if I turn off this visualisation depth, you'll see that the H is now actually more in focus than the A. 
so if we go over the A you'll see it start to come into so you can add to that mask but just the same again you can then go back over it again and remove it and blur it just flip on so you see it's now gone back to its purples and it's going dark. So obviously the darker it is, going by the scale here, the more of the blur effect you're going to get. Uh, so again, you can actually control quite a bit more, which is obviously the size um, and the, obviously the, the, the feather, you can see that's changing. So you've got a good bit of control over that as well. And that is pretty much the, 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 the tool itself, which is you know really handy. One of the things I have sort of like noticed is you can see it's very very sharp on the on the on the edges, very very sharp. So it looks like you've just basically well cut them out and stuck them in on Photoshop. But this is where this focus and blur tool part here will come in. So if you've got it on blur and with a very small tool, if, if you just very gently go around the edges, then you it will it will blend in that little bit more which is probably something that i'll actually recommend to do and um, and that is pretty much it uh, i do have another one that i'm going to quickly use to demonstrate as well where's it gone uh yeah let's do this one uh this is uh chloe and so it's the same again i, I this is one i actually originally did because i was actually playing around uh, with this if I just reset there we go um, and it's the same again and um, you know yeah if, if you look at the it's the, the back's too sharp so you, you, you just do the same again you know you you just apply the effect it's, it's analyzing it's doing its bit there we go it's slightly blurred let's blur it a lot more and so you know it it's just fantastic. I just love the way it works. And it's so simple to use. Same again, you can change and add different types. Just put the donut on it and you can see obviously the difference there. And come on, yeah, look at that, you see. So they, it does change how the blur effect actually is. And that is literally it. So, you know, if you want to add a little bit more blur, removing blur it doesn't it doesn't sharpen the image so if you've already got a blur there that you want to remove it's not going to do that so it, it's more a case of adding a blur before you can remove it does that make sense so but it's a real powerful tool and really handy in case you want to add just that little bit more of of a bokeh effect um it does have its drawbacks it is quite um intensive on the machine um other than that, I really like it. So thanks for joining me on this one, guys. And if you want to see another video I've got coming up of another feature that's been added to Lightroom, and you better like and subscribe for that one. But until then, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.